to um, have a doctor, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson. That's such a mouthful. Ray would come join me. But if I'm trying to be selfless, 
so that I can serve, because that's the ultimate thing. How do we serve our community? How do we serve one another? And if the grand scheme of things is for me to be selfless to do that, then which one of these things am I getting rid of? And why? I mean, why am I, why am I saying, well, Dan, in order for me to assist you, the label of father, teacher, artist, dapper gentleman, I need to throw these out. Then I can help you. Really? Is that, I mean, is that what we're talking about? Or are we talking about <laughs> help you? I, I'm too good to help you. Well, if that's the self that we're talking about, the self that says, I'm too good to help you, then what is that self? I mean, we, we generally refer to it as ego. That ego side of us that says, do what? You want me to feed who? I don't, I don't deal with the homeless. You want me to march in what? I don't, I don't do things like But what is that thing? I mean, because a lot of times people we talk about getting rid of the ego, you know, get rid of it. But it actually serves a purpose. Psychologically, it serves a purpose. So we don't want to just completely get rid of it. I mean, that would be like getting rid of our ability to feel. Well, then you're going to put your hand on a stove and not realize you're going to be burned. You wonder, somebody make the bacon? Oh, that's me. <laughs> so you really don't want to get rid of it completely, but you do want to learn how to control it. I mean, when we say, be fearless, but we don't say, be fear not. Fear serves a purpose in this thing we call human. It serves a purpose. My sister Tracy has a great, we'll call it respect, for spiders <laughs> and snake bugs and grasshoppers and anything that you want to call insect. I'll call it respect because I don't want to call it fear at this present moment, but it serves a purpose. In her, for her, it's a form of protection. Fear is what prevents us from going down a dark alley in Hell's Kitchen in New York City at 3 o'clock in the morning. Because it may not be the safest thing to do. So fear serves a purpose, but we want to be fearless. So that we're not afraid of things that are either irrational or ego-based. There's, there's this wonderful gentleman, I don't know if anyone knows him, his name's Ernest, and he wrote this, wrote this, and in here he refers to this thing called self-condemnation. And I won't read it. He references the prodigal son. And there's this idea that we condemn ourselves, that we judge ourselves, we criticize ourselves, we do all of this to ourselves. And that thing that is doing this is the self that we want to reduce. When we say, Libby, do you talk to yourself? You don't have to answer. <laughs> Who is the self that's talking to the self? When you say, do you, do you talk to your self? Your is possessive. Your car, your guitar, your keyboard, it's your, your voice. It, you own it. You have some kind of control, ownership of it. So who is the you that owns the self that's taught? What? How often do we really sit down and think about that, though? That we have these very voices in our mind, and some of them are not healthy. But we listen to them all the time. We let mom's condemning voice ring in our mind. Dad's condemning voice ring in our mind. Our former church's voice ringing our mind. Politicians ringing our mind. Whoever, we let their voice become ours. And then we become puffed up. So that when Reverend Trish says, great, you're, you're, you're a nice guy. Or Janelle says, great, you, you know, you're, you're skilled, you're talented. And I say, no, I'm not. 
I, I can't, I can't take that. I can't accept that. That's ego. Because ego is saying, how dare you accept a compliment? Who do you think you are to be so, you have a great voice. Oh, no, I don't, no, I don't. You play amazing music. Oh, no, 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 no. You're, you're a phenomenal minister. Oh, no, 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 no. How often do we do that, though? How often do we let that voice tell us how bad we are? Oh, we'll accept that. We'll accept the criticism, the negative feedback. We're, we're, we're real quick to say, oh, this old time? Oh, it's, I, I, I could have gotten better. I could have done better. If I practice more, I can sing better. If I practice more, I can play better. If I, I don't have to do either. But if I learn how to, then maybe I could. So we're real quick to take on the negatives. And that's why we don't serve as well as we could. It's really difficult for me to hold all of this stuff and walk around with all of these negatives and help them carry that out to the car. It's almost, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's really, really challenging. And chances are, what he's going to say is, Ray, do you know how much this thing comes? Put this stuff down. He's not going to want or trust me enough to serve him fully if I'm carrying stuff. Because when I'm carrying my baggage, I can't really help someone else. It's like the farmer who has a handful of seeds and refuses to give the seeds to the soil. What are you growing then? Get a handful of them. Oh yes, I got I get ooh. So you know this year we didn't we didn't really get anything crops or anything. We didn't really and last year we didn't get crops, didn't you know? Well why not farmer Ray? I'm not, I'm not really sure. Could it be because you didn't plant anything? Could that be why? Because you're so busy holding and clutching to the negatives. The, the negative self, the lowercase self, the ego self, the self that says, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. Don't love me. Don't appreciate me. Don't even look at me because I'm stupid, fat, ugly, skinny, tall, thin, gay, straight, bi. I'm something that needs to be judged. That's that lowercase self. And for as long as we're focusing on that one, and when we open this mirror and we look at that self, it's like going to the fun house, going to the carnival, and you look in the mirror and you're like, I have no head. Oh my goodness, where's my And you start running because you have, you have, well, I can see a body, but I don't see a head. Or I get in this one and it's, oh wow, my head's that big and my body's that big. Fun house mirrors serve the purpose of distorting our vision. Stop looking in them. Every time we watch the news, and we buy into it, and that lowercase self is buying into it, we're looking at a fun house mirror, letting it distort our concept of truth. Every time we play the tape with a recording of what our mom and dad or sister or high school teacher or first lover or whoever said to us, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, whatever, lowercase self, fun house mirror, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough. I'm not remembering who I am. I'm not remembering what I am. I'm remembering what the funhouse mirror is showing me. I'm remembering that the funhouse mirror is showing me what self-condemnation says. You know, there's, there's an old cartoon that I, and I, don't, I have no idea why I remember this. And some of you may remember it. It's, it's a cartoon, Pogo. And I remember my father pointing out this one strip. And I don't know, that's the only thing I remember. And there was a comment that said, we have seen the enemy, and the enemy is us. It's still a cartoon comic strip. But the wisdom of that is profound. Because no one can do to us, ultimately, what we don't allow. So, here's a gift, right? It's a box. Pretend with me. It's a box. It's a clear, beautiful bow. And I walk over to Libby and I say, Libby, happy birthday. And she can see in the box. And she looks in there and she sees a Tiffany's bracelet, diamonds, gold. So she can see in it. 
And for the sake of conversation, she takes it. Next year, I come with the same box, same beautiful ribbon. She can still see in it. And she looks in, and what she sees is a pile of cat food. Now, I've asked people, now I'm not going to ask you, because I've asked people before, and these are the options. What do you do? A great many people say, I would take it and throw it away. My question is, why would you take it at all? Why take it at all? If someone is offering you trash, why not tell them to throw it away? Why do you have to be the one responsible to take their box full of poo and throw it away? Why is that your responsibility? Why is it our responsibility to take their baggage? My mom, my mother, beautiful woman, had some challenging moments while I was growing up. Why is it my responsibility to take her stuff as mine and then self-condemn myself so that my life is a walking hell? Why is it my job, my responsibility, to carry the weight? I'm not Atlas. I mean, there are a couple of Greek gods that I would like to be, but I'm not Atlas. That's not one that I would select. Atlas, what's your job here in the world? What else do you, what do, you do for fun? Rotate the world. I mean, that's like that's all you do. I wouldn't be Hercules. I wouldn't fight dragons. Anyhow, I guess. Why is it our job or our responsibility to take on other people's baggage? And how can, like I said before, how do we fully serve anyone? Can you serve yourself if you are busy punishing yourself? Can you love yourself if you hate yourself? Can you be your own best friend if you have the litany of reasons why you're not worthy of being a friend. Remember the guy that said the thing? Ernest says, and I love this, this I've got like highlights of stars and a big yes in here. <laughs> Act as though I am, and I will be. Act as though I am. And I will be. So what act as though I am? Though I am what? I am good enough. Act as though I am good enough and I will be good enough. That's that remembering. Remembering who and what we are. Reconnecting to who and what we are. We're worthy. Why would we not be? And I don't I really don't care what we've ever done. It really doesn't matter. Because the moment we capital S self, the moment we identify and say, there's a part of me, there's something that is so great, grand, phenomenal that I can't even describe it. And it's so great that my lowercase self keeps me towards it rather than letting me go towards that. And what I mean by that is, you know Mary Williamson? She has this wonderful poem, and in there it refers to our deepest fear. Our deepest fear is not that we are, you know, you know this thing, right? You heard this before? Our deepest fear is not that we are, thank you, our deepest fear is not that we are weak or inferior. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Our deepest fear is not that we are in the darkness and deliver. Our deepest fear is that we are the I am. The moment someone says, as I wrestled with this, the moment someone says, you are God, you are it. God is all there is, right? That's the premise. God is all there is. Every sculpture in here is made of God's stuff. This microphone and stand is made of God's stuff. Nothing is made of something else. It's only God. Well, if God is all there is, then what are you? So if God is all there is, then the mind that you use to think with is the mind of, <gasps> what? <laughs> so 
when someone says you are God, we want to shrink. How could I be? I mean, I be great. You don't know my past. You don't understand what I've done. But not just what I've been through, but what I've done. I've done some things. So what? The prodigal son did some things too. But he came back to remembering. So our challenge is focus on that capital S self. And one of the biggest ways to focus on that so that you can, because really being selfless means I have no reason to hold on to this stuff. Let it go. I have no reason to focus on and remember the bad memories. Let them go. Capital S self is if you could be who you want to be right now, who would that be? If you could have what you want to have right now, what would you want to have? If you could do whatever you want to do right now, what would you want to do? Capital S self. Because those are the things that we feel, I can't. I can't change the world. Why, why, why can't you? You're God. You are the divine. And you end up by yourself? No, not necessarily you end up by yourself. Gandhi, one man, started a movement, changed the world. And I don't mean just change the face of India. Every rights thing since, animal rights, gay rights, civil rights, women's rights, all relates back to some way, shape, or form. So, it only takes one. It takes one person. So the moment you step forward and say, I can't, lowercase, I can, capital, I am, capital. Start looking in the mirror, start looking in the mirror and saying, I am great, I am beautiful, I am intelligent. Because if the mind you're using is the same mind that God is, it's only one, then you have access to knowledge that you don't even realize you have right now. It's like you, you could close your eyes, tap your temple, and have access to everything that's ever been written, ever, ever. And I don't just mean ever from then to now. I mean ever. Future too. You have the ability to tap into future things. How else could Orville and Wilbur create a plane? Walt Disney created a, an amusement park. And not just a park. Revolutionized film. George Lucas. Revolutionized film. There's not a film that comes through Hollywood now that is in some way touched by industrial light and magic. So you have access to the infinite, which is a past, a present, a future, because there's no time in God. But the moment you focus on lowercase s, you just said, but when I was five, but you don't understand. I've never been good enough. My grandmother said I wasn't. My father said I wasn't. My uncle kicked me down the stairs. But I've been in jail. There's nothing that you could possibly say that could make you any less divine. There's nothing you could ever do that could make you less God, less holy, less sacred. The only thing that does that is you don't tap into it. If, I, if you have a great, 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 great uncle, you, you don't even know this man exists. And he dies. And he leaves you $78 billion. $78 billion is yours. But you spend none of it. Reverend Trish, I can't pay my life bill. But I, my water's going to get cut off. They just repossessed my car. And all of you are going to look at me and say, Fool, you have said $8 million, pay the bill. <laughs> you have access to infinity. You have access to the thing that makes every blade of grass grow. 
It makes how often does grass grow? Oh, every year. If I asked you to go outside right now and find a patch of land right outside, two feet by two feet, and count how many blades of grass, how long might that take you? Yeah. It's, going, it's going to take a little bit of time. Yeah. Now, expand that. An acre. An acre of grass. How many blades of grass is that? More than you ever want to count. Sands on the Sahara. How many grains of sand? How many times, how many snowflakes fall? every year. How many raindrops? How many leaves on the tree? There is infinite abundance everywhere, but we choose not to see it. Lowercase s. And I'm going to say this lowercase s represents this thing called S-A-T-A-N. The father of all lies. That's what the, the name, the archetype of Satan is. Satan is a liar. Satan is the ego that says, oh, don't spend the money. I know your uncle left it for you, but don't spend it. Because if you spend it, it'll be gone. And then you'll be, you'll be broke. You'll be poor. Fool, I'm not spending it now. You're not broke anymore. <laughs> Which is why in the story, Jesus said, get me behind me, Satan. Leave me alone. I'm not paying you any attention because I'm focusing on capital S self. I'm focusing on Christ consciousness because in that we have access to everything, anything you could ever want to be, do, or have. And in that place, there is no possible way that you can't serve the greater good, not of your community, but of your community, this thing called Earth. Because when you make up your mind to say, I believe peace is possible. I believe war could be eradicated this generation. And you come together, as Libby said, one mind, as a practitioner, as people of a sacred community, and say, this is our prayer. And we don't pray for it to, dear God, please give us, please help us. We pray for this awareness that it's already done. Because the moment I have the thought of it, it's just not concretized. It's not a physical thing yet. But it has to start here. Start here, it's already done. Now let me manifest it. So if we hold that thought and say, peace is possible. No, peace already is. And so it is. Then it will be. So my challenge for you is to say, capital S self, what does that mean for me? Be this self less. Be this self more. Because the more you focus on that, the more you are allowing Christ consciousness to bubble up. It's already there. But you got to open your eyes to it. you got to open your mind to it. you got to open your heart to it. And realize that you're worthy of it. Realize that you're already it. So why not get up, dance, and have fun and say, wow, it's Monday morning, and I get to go to this job, and I have a supervisor that last week I really didn't like. <laughs> but after Sunday, Reverend Ray spoke, and I realized that they're God, and so am I. Namaste. I bless you. Because I know that we're having this dance called, you want to give me an unsatisfactory evaluation, I really don't like you. <laughs> so we're going to have this dance because I know it serves a purpose. And I'm okay with it. Capital S self. Capital S self. I am that I am. I am good. I am that. I am great. I am beautiful. I am knowledgeable. I am 